what's going on guys so i just picked up the raspberry pi 4 it normally sells for 55 dollars but then i've uh micro center was selling that for 49.99 five dollars off so you know i'm a cheap man right so i want to pick that up really quick uh no one is on sale so now i have the raspberry pi uh 4 with uh with me uh but then i've had the raspberry pi 3 this one i've had that for some time now it only has one gigabyte of ram and it makes it a little bit slow for me uh consider it that you actually have to put an operating system on the raspberry pi before you could run any script on it you know what i'm saying so it makes the raspberry pi 3 a little bit slow for my liking it puts too much weight on it and then it makes it uh, too slow for me uh but then i don't have to worry about that now since the raspberry pi 4 comes in three different versions it comes in a one gigabyte version a two gigabyte version and then a four gigabyte version i have the four gigabyte version with me so it should be way faster than the one gigabyte Raspberry Pi 3. All right. So in this video, I'll be running uh, a blink LED script to automatically turn an LED on and off. Um, and then I could even add a switch to the mix to manually turn the, uh, the LED on and off. All right. So but before getting to that, let me put an operating system on the Raspberry Pi. And then I could uh, put my script on the Raspberry Pi to execute, uh, to, to automatically turn the LED on and off. All right. So let me jump right into it. So guess what, guys? I have almost everything that I need. I have the HDMI cable. I have the USB Type-C power cable. And I also have the Raspberry Pi 4. But then I am missing something. I'm missing the SD card. So... Uh, I'm quickly going to pick that up uh, from Best Buy. Okay guys, so I'm back and I have the SD card. Now that completes it for everything that I need. I'm going to flash the SD card with the operating system really quick. Okay, so we are a step closer to actually writing our script. Um, I have done the setup. I've completed uh, setting up the operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I have also installed uh, a VNC server on it so I could remotely access it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect to it remotely. We will install uh, Python uh, libraries. We will install the IDLE. And then we will also install some GPIO libraries as well. Then we could get to writing the script. So now that we've completed installing all the libraries on the Raspberry Pi, let's finally 
begin writing the blink LED script to control the LED. So now let's begin writing the script. Let me open up the Python IDLE. And now I will create a new file. Move this to the side. Stretch this out a little bit. All right, so let me save this file. Let me save it as Blink LED. And I'll save it to my desktop. Save is on my desktop. I've already uh, copied, I mean, I've already written down the script already. So I'm basically going to paste it right over here. Oh, that's not it. Let me get that. All right, so I'll walk you guys through the script. Uh, in the beginning, these two lines, all I'm doing is importing two different libraries. I'm importing the GPIO library, the Raspberry Pi GPIO library, so I could control the GPIO pins. Uh, and then uh, I'm importing the time library uh, and then getting the sleep. Uh, yeah, I'm importing the time function from the sleep library. Um, and also in this section, all I'm doing is basically setting up the GPIO um, format, you could say, or the setup. And I'm using the BCM uh, format. And then I'm initializing the GPIO pin 17 as my output pin. And then I'm initializing that to a low, uh, which means off. Um, in this section over here, I have a while loop uh, with three iterations. Uh, it would initially turn on the uh, the pin, uh, pin 17, and it turn uh, it will turn that on for four seconds. And when it does, it will print out that the light is on or LED is on. And then it will turn it off for two seconds. Uh, it, yeah, it will set that to a low and turn it off for two seconds. So that's basically what is happening over here. Um, and at the end, uh, I do a cleanup and clean up my pins, my GPIO pins. All right, so that is the script. Now, let's get right onto the board. Let's hook it up to a, an LED. Okay. So I have connected the LED to pin 17 over here. Uh, and then I have the negative side of the LED connected to ground. That is basically the setup. I normally will run this through a resistor but I do not have any resistors with a low resistance at the moment. So this is basically what I'm working with. You work with what you have, right? All right, so let me quickly run the module. I'm running the script and there you go. The LED turns on for four seconds. Two seconds is out. It comes back on for four seconds. Goes back out. Okay, on again, and then off. And that's where the script ends, because it runs it for three iterations. All right, so now I will add a switch to the mix. Here on the board, I have added a switch. That's basically all I've added to the on, uh, on the breadboard. The LED pin is still the same. It goes over uh, to pin 17, and it's connected to ground. I'm basically sharing the ground uh, between the two. So the ground is shared for the LED switch and then the LED itself. All right, now let's go over to the code. I have made some changes to the code as well. Nothing much uh, for the first two lines. I've not changed anything. Uh, now I'm calling the LED, uh, I'm calling the GPIO pin 17 LED pin and I'm calling GPIO pin 27 as bu uh, button pin, which is my switch pin. So that is basically what I did for these two sides. So now pin 27 will be used as the input pin for the switch. And that's basically what is happening over here. This, has, this line has not changed. But then over here, I'm setting the LED pin, pin 17, as an output pin, an output pin, and then I'm in mean an output, and then I'm setting that to low initially. And then over here in this line, I'm setting pin 27 
which is my button pin or my switch pin, I'm setting it as an out, uh, as an input, and I'm initializing that as a pull up. In this side of in this part of the code, um, I have a while loop that is infinite, and then it would turn on it would turn on the light. Sorry, it would turn off the light when the pull up is one or the input pin uh the, yeah the input pin the button pin is one or high uh so that's basically what is happening uh in this in this if statement and then i have an else if statement over here where if the pull up or the button pin is low then it means okay i've pushed the button and then it would turn on the light um the led and at the end, I basically do a cleanup again. All right. So that's basically what is happening in this in, in the code. Now let's see what happens when I actually push the switch. So when I push the switch, it turns on the LED, and also it will print uh, that it will, it will it will print on on the on the shell on the IDLE that. Uh, I have pushed the uh, the pin. I've I've pushed the switch, and then uh, so that's basically what you see on the on the IDLE. It says button has been pushed, light on, and then the light is on as well. When I take my hand off, the light goes off, and then it prints light off. So that's basically what is happening over here. So light on, uh, light off, light on, light off, light on, light off, light on. Okay, so there you go, guys. You have LED being turned on automatically, and then you have the LED being turned on manually using the switch. All right, so I will leave uh, the script in the description for both of them the one with the LED being turned on manually, and then the one with the LED being turned on automatically, both in the description. Scroll over down to the description, and you can find that in there. All right, if you found any inf any value in this information over here, Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm out, guys.